May your candle of love, truth and light deliver the divine spark of understanding to all who await their call from Holy God of the light and of the creation. Amen. Well done, Chela, well done indeed. And for you who would have more of the directed teachings and explanations of that which has been given and then corrupted by man, straight from the horse's mouth, I suggest you stay tuned. Master Isu Jesus Sananda intends to give this Chela direct and literal instructions as to that which you call the commandments, you may be surprised to find that there may not even be ten of them, but that is not for me. For that which you will receive will come directly from Emmanuel Sananda, Jesus, Lord Michael and Germain. You are going to witness a world in transition and transmutation and there is rejoicing in the houses and councils of God. Amen. We know and understand that this is the information for which most of you readers long for and have awaited, but all things must flow in proper sequence and again, I remind you, if you know not the problems and uncover the lies you cannot recognize of the cure for the diseases which have been created to keep you blinded. I am going to ask closure of this portion following addition of Sananda's message see forward, via Thamarasifi, Thomas, for the name itself, Thomas, is communion, twin within the light and bringer of communication. Dru is our loving term for Drufya, bringer of strength through the teachings and gift of God. We are grateful indeed, to share in the service unto man and God. These writings will be placed to print in their own volumes, as we move along but we will adhere to necessary sequence for optimum speed of acceptance and fullness of understanding. As other scribes are introduced we shall rejoice also, at the graduation into a unity of purpose. Oh yes, and Dharma shouts. Hallelujah. She thinks she will get a rest. Let us not burst of her bubble. I get another funny reaction, when Little Crow was sent to tell Dharma that she would write at least three more volumes, some ten volumes passed, it has been laughed about greatly by one who kept saying when are we going to have done enough. Little was their realization that God always has plans for ones who effort to limit, he makes of them the scribes, so that they, too, can produce in unlimitedness. Keep your sense of humor, Kilas, for the journey is an experience to be accepted in fullness and joy, not with thine faces long and thine spirits down, if ye walk with God of truth through this journey it can be naught but joy. Ye must release that which is perceived, as bad from thine possession of it, for it is not yours to possess. Ponder it. In love beyond the discipline. I am heaven, to close and stand aside, while you take opportunity to think upon these things. Salo and Adonai. Recognizing and defining the most deadly sins of human. We are your hosts, Sananda, Lord Michael, Germain and Drofia in service to the truth and wisdom which is only of the holy light of God slash Adam and the creation. We come from the cosmic council of the light of God slash Adam the one within all to bring to you, our brethren, the truth that you too may join in the joy of oneness, the lighted brotherhood within God's holy kingdom of light, truth, beauty and wisdom. First, we would like to give careful clarification of our use of terms to represent God slash Adam. You will find that we often say Father within or refer to Adam as a he signaling male gender. This way we term our Creator in your language is not meant as a sexual gender, as you recognize same. Our Creator God slash Adam represents both male slash female principles, if you will. There is no sexual gender differential. The spirit of life is what you may understand, in limited language, male slash female energy representation. As are all of you. You each have chosen a body, male or female, for your experience, only both energies are represented within each of you. Also, you will find examples used in which we will say he which we mean, as a general human term for humanity, not specific sexual gender. This we explain so that the ones who are in female physical form do not feel slighted or that we honor them less. And so also, ones in male physical form do not feel more or less than equal to female humans. All fragments of creator slash creation are equal in reflection regardless of what color or gender of physical form is taken. In your own minds, if you prefer to call and refer to God slash Adam slash creation, as mother slash father creator slash creation, then so be it. Now, we would like to bring light and understanding onto that question all of you have struggled with, and that is, what is evil? But before you can have understanding of what is evil, we must help you to understand, what is God? Since the laws of God and creation given forth have described God as the ruler of the human races and the kin of wisdom, then this, in itself, implies that God is a great being of spiritual wisdom and perfection within the creation. 
but to confine what God is to limits of third dimensional human language and perception alone is a mistake. Because of the limited boundaries of your plane, you have not yet developed the capability of defining a limitless being or state of being. Since our God Creator has created us, what this means is that He has fragmented Himself, as the creation fragmented itself in the creation of God, in order to expand and experience more of the totality of the One. This is why God's laws, the laws of nature, the laws of balance and the laws of the creation all exist as the same universal laws of cohesive harmony and oneness. Universal laws are the cosmic codes of a limited creative enfoldment which allows the greatest degree of expansion and of expression of the totality of all that is. Each fragment exists as a part of Creator God and thus as a part of the creation as well. The cosmic codes or laws are the keys of logic which maintain the balanced coalescence of creative enfolding expansion of the one all that is. So, by learning to recognize that which limits your expanding creative potential, you will identify that which keeps you bound to your illusion of separation from the One. And by gaining the wisdom of knowledge of what is evil, sin, and adversary to God and creation, you will then be able to wisely move your awareness to what is your personal responsibility in the co-creation of the love of life which is the joy of wholeness and oneness of the limitless creation. So then now, what is evil? Evil, also called Satan or adversary, is all thought and the energy it creates which is allowed or is chosen, through free will, to exist, which confines and limits the expansion and expression of creative enfoldment of the totality of oneness. It is that which swims against the flow of cosmic creation in order to feel itself in separation and thus it exists only within boundaries or limits of the whole. It is self-consuming in that it seeks to dominate the whole, and because it can only dominate within its own self-imposed boundaries, it finally is consumed itself by the rushing waters of the expanding one. Now many ones in their exuberance of finally grasping the concept that all is one, will oftentimes believe that they must now be all allowing, since all are choosing experience, as part of the one. We will hear one say things such, as, there is no good and bad, all is just experience, it just is. Therefore, how can I judge something such as a behavior or action to be bad or good for another, when it is not my experience or right to judge another? What we say to this is, you can allow yourselves into perpetuity, but if you do not recognize those thoughts, words and deeds which are contrary to life and godness, how do you think you will reach his unlimited kingdom of conscious immortality? Does this mean, that by recognizing the Antichrist or adversaries, that you must make yourself the enforcer of God's laws? Not at all. God needs no enforcers, he needs only examples be set forth, so that ones can see a brighter, balanced and more loving way of being. Each must begin that journey within self, and as each ignites his flame of truth and godly understanding, so, too, will he choose to change his thinking, behavior and actions in order to be in balance with God in oneness. This does not mean that you will allow others to maliciously cause you harm. You must always honor self and God and defend yourself, if necessary, to protect yourself from abuse or damage by another. You do not have to choose victimhood, ever, and you must not tolerate or allow behavior directed against you or your brethren which you know is contrary to the laws of God and creation. Do you see what your gift of free will is, dear ones? It is through your experiences of learning what God is not that you will, therefore, know what God is. We have observed, as many ones will say smugly, but God created everything including evil, so it just is a part of our experience. Remember this carefully, God slash Adam created who man in his image of perfection, he gave you free will and with your free will you have chosen to be the adversary and break every law of balance, so don't any of you ever think you can shirk your personal responsibility, because you believe God created evil, man created evil with his own free will. And with the divine mercy of his creator, Adam, he will find his way back to godly balance or he will continue to remain bound in his dark cage of self-service and separation from the creative spirit of life. You see, friends, your free will is really your choice to make your will God's will, or to live according to the will of your altered ego which seeks always to limit your spiritual understanding and, therefore, to disrupt and destroy your creative potential, harmony and balance of oneness. Ultimately you will recognize that the only free will you have is that which is God's will, because you will have gained the wisdom of knowing that the logical balance of God's way is really the only way to the joy of truly balanced spiritual freedom.
Now, we will be defining and discussing what are the deadliest sins, or errors, made in your experience which keep you swimming upstream against the flow of the balance of the cosmic creative enfoldment. These sins are the tools of Satan or the adversary to keep you bound in your illusion of separation from God and the creation. Also, you are kept under this dominance, through the ignorance of false belief and superstition, of a false power which keeps you locked within the spiritual starvation of limited manifested reality. 1. Pride. Pride, as defined in your dictionary, 1. And a new sense of one's own superiority, arrogance, conceit. 2. A proper sense of personal dignity and worth. 3. That of which one is justly proud. As you see by this definition there seems to be two diametrically opposed types of pride. The one which is our focus, as sin or error to the spirit within is what is also termed, as false pride. False pride in itself refers to feelings of haughty superiority and rightness versus the feeling of self-respect and honor for achieving an understanding or act which one has diligently and honestly worked for. Now, on page 54 to 55 of the Phoenix Journal entitled Satan's Drummers by Jesus Sananda, Sananda is discussing at great length what is evil. The one who is possessed of evil or that which is anti-God is most self-willful. We will quote, healthy individuals submit themselves to the demands of their own conscience. Not so the evil ones, for in the conflict between their guilt and their will, it is the guilt that must go and the will that must win. Evil people are extraordinarily willful, determined to always have their own way and they have a most remarkable power in the manner in which they attempt to control others. And yet, a characteristic of all great people is that they are extremely strong-willed, whether their greatness be for good or for evil. I, Jesus, as you called me, was a bending and strong-willed, but, but so was one named Hitler, could it be the difference in willingness and willfulness? Quote, Mine willfulness was that of our fathers, Hitler's was that of his own. It becomes evident, doesn't it that the one whose will is of his own is threatened greatly by goodness? It therefore leads to the need of, evil, destruction of the goodness or that one which represents such. Thus murder is born. It is better, of course, if the evil one can cause the one of goodness to acquiesce in total submission and give through total abandonment of goodness into the hands of evil. I think your psychiatrists might label this type of behavior of self-demand, narcissism, defined, as, 1. Excessive admiration for or fascination with oneself. 2. Psychoanal. Erotic interest in one's own body. It is not strong enough a term for evil so let us call evil a disease of cancerous, or malignant, narcissism. Your church authorities have generally considered pride first among the sins. Pride goes before the fall, and so it is. Pride is actually the same as cancerous narcissism, but I want you to realize I can also speak your hidden languages. End quote. So, if one is proud, defined, as, one, actuated by, possessing, or manifesting pride, arrogant, also self-respecting. Two, sense of honor and personal elation, generally followed by or by a verb in the infinitive, one is either fooling himself by false feelings of superiority over another or others, or he is simply being self-respecting by validating a worthy achievement of his own or of another. Since one can also be proud of another's achievement or action, this pride in another many times is simply the judgment that the action accomplished by the other is one which they themselves would be proud to accomplish as well. It is supporting one's own conviction of truth, whether it truly be true or not. For example, many parents believe that, when their children are sent off to war ostensibly for protecting and defending their country, that, even though war involves the murder of others, they, the parents must feel proud of their sons for doing their duty for their country. Now are they truly proud or are they simply hiding behind their own false pride, because they are terrified that their child may die, and if that were to happen for no good honorable reason they could not forgive themselves for being wrong and supporting their sons in the lie of war?